Good Wednesday morning. Welcome into the Alana Inquirer podcast. We are live on our YouTube channel. Thanks to everybody for joining us over there. Give us a like, subscribe to us, hit the notifications bell wherever you are. We appreciate it. Uh, we could do one of these, it feels like, every day now uh, since it is not the off season. It is transfer portal season, and nobody has been over it uh, and covering it as well as Derek Piper, our own from IlanaInquirer.com. Derek, good morning. How is the uh, off season treating you so far? It's not off, uh, but it's been wild. So, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's eventful. It's something to, to to cover every day, but it, it's been a whirlwind, as expected. But when it hits you, then it, you actually know you're in it. So um, there, there's a lot to talk about for sure. Yeah, we have a new commitment for Illinois, Trey White, uh, out of Louisville via USC, former top 50 prospect a couple years ago. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a big name that we expected to hit the portal at some point, and he did, Kylan Boswell. Uh, some visits upcoming for Illinois. Uh, we'll hit on AJ store and get to some of your questions throughout this. Send in those questions, super chats. We appreciate all those. We'll get to all that today. We'll try to keep it to 40, 45 minutes or under that. We'll try to, but there's certainly a lot to talk about. And first, Derek, it is Trey White. This one popped up. Uh, it seemed like Illinois worked this one quietly, but six foot seven, he's a playmaker. He played mostly the four at Louisville. You could call him a little bit of a wing because of the way he can handle it. Uh, but why did Illinois make Trey White, who averaged 12.6 rebounds at Louisville, a priority was an all freshman team guy at USC, averaging nine and five as a true freshman. Started 55 games his first two years. Why was he an Illini priority and what does he bring? Yeah, it definitely was one that was worked in stealth mode by Tim Anderson, and there wasn't a lot of buzz out there about him. His name first came up. Now, I've been familiar with him when he was a high school prospect, played with the Mac Urban Fire. I know he's from Texas, but obviously has a connection. Chicago in some way to play with them and was at one time a, a five-star when he first popped up on 24-7's rankings, he was number 10 in the country. So, uh, and that's kind of speaking to why Illinois was really intrigued is, is his upside. And someone that at USC, like you mentioned, pretty darn good player on a winning team, 22 uh, wins for USC that year, went to the tournament. I think he was third in scoring. Uh, and as a freshman, you give nine, 10 points a game, five boards uh, and play the way that he did. I, I think that, that was putting him in a all league, all freshman team out there. And uh, from what I heard, that kind of popped him up on the the NBA radar a little bit. Not to say that he was going to get drafted after year one, but that he he was someone that people were taking notice of. And, and if he takes the next step, that he could be a, a bona fide NBA prospect. Now, he didn't necessarily do that at Louisville. Uh, he goes to a, a bad situation, takes some bad shots that whether he was part of the problem or he was just influenced by what was a one of the biggest messes, if not the biggest mess in college basketball last year. Now, DePaul's probably up there too, uh, and probably every year. But um, shot selection was something for him. But on the positive side, he's a guy that, as you see there, goes to the glass. That's a, a strength of his for sure. Uh, he's got athleticism. He's got good size at 6'7", 205, and can do a, a number of different things. You know, they like his mid-post game. Uh, that's something that you you watch some of the film and you see him backing guys down and, and being able to play out of that. It's kind of right here, mid post ice. So that looks pretty familiar, right? As far as Marcus Damask. Now, can he pass out of that? He doesn't have a lot of assists. That's one thing that uh, you'd have to maybe work on that with him if you're going to play some booty ball, but uh, can make plays off the dribble too. He's someone that can get to the rim, but also, as you see uh, with, with that, while he's not a great three point shooter, 20, 29% on his career, two attempts a game, his metrics say he's a really, really good mid range shooter, that he's actually pretty darn good in that 17, 18 foot range. Um, so it, it's someone that you saw last year, how much they liked positional size mm -hmm. and, and just being big defensively and creating mismatches. I think he can play. He, he probably is a three slash four. Uh, we'll see how the, the rest of the additions go. I think that we'll, I know we'll talk about AJ store here later. Uh, we'll, pr we'll probably talk AJ store every day for a podcast, <laughs> but uh, if you add him, he's the three, maybe Trey's the four. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Cause there's, there's still a number of moving pieces here, but uh, I think it's someone that the evaluation for Illinois standpoint is someone that's hungry, that kind of went to a situation that wasn't good for him last year and wants to be in a winning culture, wants to be somewhere that's going to develop him, get the most out of him. And the best version of Trey White should be a pretty darn good player. Yeah, I think 
you got two sides of this, right? Like there's already a really high floor in this player. Like he is a starting high major player, uh, one for a winning team at USC, one for a really bad team in Louisville, but he's been a double digit score, five, six rebound guy in his two years, his freshman and sophomore year. So, you know, you got a really good contributor at the, at the worst part there. The other part is there's still upside here. Um, he's a former number 35 prospect in what the class of 2022. Um, and if, if NBA teams took notice of him at USC, like Illinois obviously sees something that they can unlock even more in him. There's potential multiple years of eligibility here as well that Illinois needs guys not only for next year, but any guys they can build around too. Like you got Terrence Shannon for two years. You had Coleman Hawkins for four years. Like you're, you're missing some guys who are pillars of your program. So uh, the skill you can see, right? Like he can catch and shoot and catch and shoot opportunities. He was 35% from three, the mid range, he shoots about 44, 45%, which is really good. You can see maybe he can operate in booty ball. He has not a proven passer though. So he'd have to do that, but he can finish at the rim six, seven. I don't know if he's an elite athlete, Derek, but he's a good athlete as we're seeing on the screen right here. I don't, I've heard he's not a very good defender uh, from, from Louisville people, but mm. you feel like he should have some versatility with his length. I would imagine Brad Underwood's going to demand that out of him. So it's hard to evaluate out of what a mess of a program Louisville was, but Illinois must have heard good things, must know good things that this guy's going to be bought in and that he realized I can't just go someplace and get stats. I need to go someplace and make a winning impact. So they must have seen something. He has transferred twice in two years here. He's been, this will be his third school in three years. That can always raise a red flag, but Illinois must have done some homework and found out some things that they think this kid's got his mind on, right? Yeah, and I would say that they did based on what I've heard. And it, it did take some good intel for them to trust that he was the right fit. Now, Tim's known him for a while. Like you go back to AAU and playing Mac Urban Fire, obviously, Tim being with Mean Streets and at the Paul Chicago connections, that uh, there's a, a long term, long standing, at least a, a number of years relationship there. Uh, I know that Brad also has, has long liked him uh, as a prospect and uh, what he could be. So I, I think it is kind of a bet on who he could become, but they, they did need to to dig into whether it was, and it sounds like they touched base with some NBA people and how they they saw him. Why was he popping up on their radar? What did they think of him? And, and yeah, I, I will say to follow up and just add another log on the the de defensive side. I, I think Illinois would even tell you in, in evaluating what he did last year, he didn't didn't guard anybody. So um, I I don't He's know. Good, it sounds right. Like he, like you yeah. look at this guy, he's a good athlete. He's long. He's, he's versatile. Like I, I think that guy should be able to guard two through four at the very least. He should be pretty capable at the defensive end with his length, with the way that he moves. And again, it, it's, it's hard to know uh, on the outside of it was, was it just Louisville was non-competitive and I'm sure it would have been easy to, to quit. Like Kenny Payne got fired on Twitter like eight times last year uh, before it actually happen so uh i'm sure that the outside noise and just the, the losing and whatnot was hard to uh be able to stay focused and committed to but at the same time there probably isn't a, a mindset change that needs to happen out that to just give an example like quincy gary kind of lost his rebounding motor at oregon and, and really was something that he got away from and then brad was able i know his inconsistency popped up later portions of of last year but I think Illinois feels like they can get the most out of people that can motivate people. And Trey should be motivated because he's someone that if he wants to reach where he can actually go, he's only got two more years to do that. So um, they felt like he was in the right state of mind and, and ready to to embrace some accountability and, and what it takes to to get the most out of him. And we'll talk about this, but like he should have more just open catch and shoot opportunities if Illinois lands the lead guard, the extra guard, the wing that they want to where he's not having to shoot as much off the bounce. So I do think that three point percentage could go up for him. If he's just, you know, a, a catch and shoot kind of guy that can also dribble off the bounce. Two things I've noticed. They got, they've had two players in the transfer portal so far here, Derek, Jake Davis and Trey white, both have mostly played the four, both have size and offensive ability, some defensive questions. What does this tell you about the roster building so far and just the vision they have this off season? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I would say, again, positional size is something that they definitely want. 
um, offensive versatility and ability. I mean, Jake Davis, why they really liked him. They thought he was one of the best movement shooters in all of college basketball, like being able to come off actions and, and shoot and, and to be able to do a little bit off the dribble. They got to, they got to work on that for sure. But yeah, there's, there's some, some questions defensively. I, I think that for him, Illinois loved that he was so bought into a role. Like he, he was a guy that that's what worked so well last year. Part of what worked so well is that when they identified people in the portal, they had additions that were not trying to overplay what Illinois needed out of them. Now, Damask was someone they they, they got a lot more than they envisioned and, and probably even sold him on. But just the way the, the chemistry of the team worked together, you had to have players that would be OK coming off the bench, players that were about winning and, and, and selfless. So uh, I think with Davis, they, they definitely realized that. Now, they want to go get shooting, make no mistake about it. Um, outside of Trey White, like that's a, a question with him, but um, you know, Dante Maddox and, and, and that type of thing. I, I think that they believe circle back, they believe that they can make uh, Trey White a, a decent defender. So uh, I, I think just in general, they want a, another big team positional size, maybe some switchability out there with a, a guy like Trey and they're not, I mean, the number of pieces that they want, like we're going to talk about it as far as the visits and whatnot, but, they're involved as a stretch four. They're involved with potential adding a five. They're involved with multiple guards. Uh, I think they're they're having a lot of players and pieces that they are very interested in, if not want to flat out go get. And um, obviously, there are spots to to fill, but I think there are there is a question too of how do they make all this work? Which I don't doubt them getting that done. It's just interesting. Yeah, this was an intriguing take for me at this time, Derek, because you know they still want probably two guards and a wing and a forward. That's four more players. Uh, yeah, they yeah. currently have three scholarships open. I mean, I, I don't know who it would be. Uh, you know, People can speculate, whatever. I, I think they're counting on another scholarship opening here. Just the way they're acting. Like Trey White, to me, is another front court piece. Um, you know, He could play maybe three a little bit, but he's really a four, a skilled four. So uh, that, that says to me that another piece could open up here. So I know people counting scholarships, the way they're acting, the, the guys they're getting on campus and the guys they're going after, it still feels like there's you know, four pieces they want to add to this roster. Yep. Fully agree with that. And player meetings ongoing this week. Uh, I, I know that we had Luke Goody on the radio yesterday. He said that later this week, he'll have his sincere's had his and put out a tweet that, uh, maybe indicates that he has interest in coming back. I wouldn't say that it's firm and final as far as that goes. And I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen some stories saying he has announced his return. Like I don't know. I I know he tweeted something with ILL and a highlight video. I I didn't say I am returning. I just didn't get that. I didn't get a press release. I didn't get anything like that. So you never know. I mean, Brandon Podjimski didn't say anything until three weeks in, and no one had added some pieces. Yep, and yep. Uh, Sincere last year tweeted, I'm coming back, and then deleted it. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I think that everybody – and look, this isn't just you know unique to Illinois. I think that with the portal window open, with coaching staffs going out there and, and trying to see who they can get and can they upgrade certain positions, filling needs, whatnot, I think it's fluid. I think it's fluid for who Illinois can get. I think it's fluid for the players on the roster who are having the ability to return to say what are they – see themselves in a certain situation or how their playing time might uh, be affected by that. And then obviously if they need to make room, they, they got to flat out make room. So the, the portal window to enter is still through May 1st. I think that there's still obviously potential and a likelihood that a spot, maybe two will come open, but uh, it, it probably is dependent. The number of that is dependent on who Illinois can get. Can, can I say this? I, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Brad Underwood is pretty ruthless when it comes to upgrading his roster. Like if he can upgrade, he's gonna try and upgrade over you, um, yes. which has led to wins for him. But like, I know we're used to like, I'd like to see this freshman become the sophomore, become the junior. Brad Underwood's not guaranteeing that to anyone. And it doesn't sound like Derek that you know just from what we hear, like he's guaranteeing these huge roles to everybody. He's saying you gotta compete for this spot, and that's part of being what Illinois is now. Like we have set the expectation that we compete for Big Ten championships. We can get to the second week in the tournament. We want to play for national championships. Like we're not, we're not just going to hand a spot to a guy because we like you. Uh, we 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 want you to be the best player. We want to be the best team. No doubt, it's work for him. Obviously, uh, there's that. I would say that big time programs through the years don't 
probably think a whole lot about, especially unproven guys, guys that have been bench players, guys that were high school recruits and, and for as highly touted as maybe they were, you know, we've, how many times we've seen guys go into Kentucky and, and not play and then have to transfer out. And uh, I just feel like that's how top tier teams have operated. They just stack talent and see who is able to really show themselves to be worthy of, of playing time and let it work out. Let the guys that fall by the wayside do it. And um, I think it's also maybe a counter punch to earlier. Uh, there was Adam Miller, a guy that probably got some assurances or just year one opportunity, didn't pull him out of the starting lineup because I'm sure they didn't want to upset him. Uh, not that he wasn't a bad, you know, wasn't a good player on that, that one seed team, but he had some struggles at times and they played him 25 minutes, 26 minutes, started him every game and he transferred. And Sky Clark and Jaden Epps were sharing the starting point guard role and both left. So I think that's kind of the, the way that Brad has maybe shifted or just approached where you can give guys everything that they would want and they could still leave you. So on the flip side, Brad's going to get the guys that he wants and let that, let that uh, just play out as it will. It's the flip side of player freedom to move, right? Is coaches right. have freedom to upgrade over you immediately, like at, at any time. And that's kind of what we're in right now. And it's, it's a business for both sides. Jack, I, I understand the question. Any speculation who would be leaving? Listen, what we're talking about is they can upgrade. They have two guys returning right now, Derek, who have played more than 10 minutes a game last year. Luke Goody and Ty Rogers. Anyone else like is unproven at this point. So while I like the idea of Amani Hansberry and Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, and those guys have said the right things to this point. And I, I like the idea of you know Nico Moretti being this change up point guard, like right under was trying to upgrade. And uh I, I think any of those guys, they're probably gonna be interested in the next couple of weeks to see what uh Illinois adds to the rest of the roster. Speaking of that, Derek, this move to get Trey White, does it have any impact, do you think, on the wings they're going after in A.J. Store, Otega Owe, or anyone else? I don't think so, especially A.J. Store. They're still going to be very, very much pursuing him as the top guy on their board, in my opinion. And it's one that maybe will take longer to play out. You could say that, in a, in a way, Trey could be a little bit of, of A.J. Store insurance. Not to say that he's going to be – he. they're different players. Like Trey's not going to be the the wing score that you need, run stuff through, get him 12 to 15 shots a night type of type of guy. But it is someone with, with good size, athleticism, upside, and whatnot. Uh, but with Storr, I think he wants to go through the NBA draft process. Not to say he couldn't decide on the place that he would go if he does go back to school. Um, so I, I think Illinois, from Illinois' standpoint – Trey White does not change at all how they go after AJ Store. I still think they like Otega away uh, a good amount, and, and he'd be a, a guy that definitely brings a, a lot of defensive prowess for sure. Uh, his offense isn't as prolific as AJ Store, but he's capable. Like he he shot really well in catch and shoot. Uh, he can do some things, especially in transition, uh, going to the basket. So uh, I I've been told that Trey White doesn't really change anything yeah. as far as who we already knew they were going after in terms of guards, in terms of another wing, in terms of stretch four and all those things. So um, that's just what I've heard. Uh, we got a question from Kenneth, and I, th I think it's relevant. What if Dar Marcus Damas comes back? Uh, could potentially, and it sounds like he will, apply for a waiver for hardship uh, for the injury that he had during the pandemic season. Now he got that season for free. Uh, we've talked about it here, Derek. Like, I don't think there's a lot of optimism, but you shoot your shot. You hope you can get the Alex Palczewski thing here. It's a different case. But uh, what do you make of of the Marcus Damask? It, it seems like they're not counting on that in the way they're going about their offseason here. No, they're not holding their breath for sure. Now they are keeping the, the door open because who, who wouldn't want that guy back, a first-team All-Big Ten player? And uh, I do think that you can make it work. Like Just because, it, say, you go get a point guard, it doesn't mean that that point guard then doesn't matter if if Marcus Tabas comes back. Now, uh, of course, he was very involved in initiating offense with booty ball and everything. So uh, bottom line, from the outside, it looks like Illinois doesn't have, or Marcus, I should say, probably, um, doesn't have a, a great case to get that sixth year of, of uh, ability to play. But you never know what the NCAA is. So I think that they're keeping the door open, and you make it work if he can come back. But – as of right now, I don't, I don't foresee it being super likely that he does. And 
And maybe if, if that happens, it wouldn't be a total shock if somebody they add says, well, this changes how I thought about things. I'm, I'm leaving. And I think, I don't think that like a transfer it's in the portal. I don't know that you're necessarily out of the portal until like you arrive on campus. So um, that even if it was past the May 1st date when it comes, because we have no idea when, when the NCAA is going to rule on Marcus Damask, they could maybe then open it back up and, and go somewhere else. So um, that's kind of the, the short of it is probably not super likely as far as I could see it, but uh, you wait and see what the NCAA says. And Jimmy, no, we have no timeline. Uh, Marcus Damas, they do not spell that out. They do not you know, update us. Uh, they usually don't update the schools all that much. Uh, so we'll find out when Illinois finds out. All right, let's the talk about say is if they if they deny it, he's going to appeal it. So that would just prolong it even more and uh, see where that goes. But it could take a while, especially if the initial answer is no. But if Marcus Damask wants to be back, he will be back. Like Illinois yeah. will welcome yeah. him back with open arms as one of the best players in the Big Ten and really one of the best in college basketball when you think about it. All right, Kylan Boswell, Kerry Booth, Dante Maddox. We'll talk about all those guys coming up. But first, let's hear from one of our great sponsors. This episode of the Illini Enquirer podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour of your day? Go for a run, take a nap, read a book, show up for a friend. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing in your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Illini today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Illini. All right, Derek Piper, last time we were on the pod or you were on the pod, you talked about Kylan Boswell as a potential portal entry. And finally it happened, took a little bit longer than people thought. But uh, Jaden Bradley was a phenomenal freshman, stole some of his playing time late in the season. But Kylan Boswell, Champagne native, uh, which, which meant, did he play at Urbana Middle School? Urbana, yeah. Okay. Um, and obviously Illinois recruited him heavily as a five-star prospect a couple of years ago. He reclassified into the class of 2022. He started a lot of games for a really good team at Arizona, about nine points, shot 37% from three at Arizona last season. Some inconsistency uh, to his game that Arizona fans will certainly tell you about. But just – he's still 18. He's, he's a sophomore with a grown man's body. He turns 19 in late April here. Um, so, what is Sincere Harris, like two years older than, than Kylan Boswell or almost three yeah, years man. older? Unbelievable. But um, Eric Bossy, 24-7 sports national writer, put in a crystal ball last night for Illinois to land Boswell. What do you think and why do you think this is a, a good match? I think, again – as far as upside goes and you go back to the high school recruitment, someone that was part of USA basketball, junior national team, highly regarded five-star, uh, those type of things went to college early. Uh, and I don't know that he necessarily regrets doing that, but it was a tough, it's tough to go into college, especially at that level and, and on the type of team that he was on at like 17 years old. So, uh, but the, the upside for him and when he's at his best is really, really good. Like you just, you see the game that he had at Duke uh, early in the season, uh, had some really good moments in the, in the Pac-12, but like you said, he was inconsistent. He does shoot the three really well, even with a, a kind of a slide late down the stretch, and, and that's where really I think the, the noise around Arizona fans and, and kind of making him the, uh, the one to blame for not having the season they ultimately thought they were going to have, um, he, he didn't – he didn't put up good numbers. I think he was double figures once in his last five or six games and uh, really went dry from three. But even with that, he shot like 37% from beyond the arc. So uh, that shows how good he is uh, as a shooter. He's got a, a really strong build. Um, not the maybe quickest guy. Uh, I think maybe you can tap in a little bit. You want to lean him up a little bit to try to make him a little bit quicker. But uh, he's someone that's good in pick and rolls, as you can see there. Uh, he's a guy that can play spot up. 
Uh, I think he can be a, a decent defender, especially with his physicality. And a, a fresh start could be really good for him. That's I, I've heard that a lot. Uh, I do think that uh, he has to take some onus in that. Like it, it's it's not just that hey Arizona was bad for him or, or anything like that. He's he's got some maturing to do. But kind of add another reference to it. Like he turns 19 next week. Trent Frazier was like 19 as soon as he showed up on campus as a freshman. So uh, the idea that he does need to to mature or just grow or whatnot, uh, those are things that aren't super surprising based on how how young he still is. So uh, to have two years of high major experience, to play uh, on really good teams and, and to see him starting on last year's team, even through a little bit of struggle, shows what Arizona thought of him. Arizona didn't want to lose him. Like they were trying to keep him. Uh, Tommy Lloyd and company, and, and at one point uh, maybe thought that they were going to. But I think that from Illinois' standpoint, I, I think with his family, the connections back to Champaign, I, I believe and have heard that the idea that Illinois would be a big-time option was was on the family's mind when they were making their decision. So him popping in the portal, I think that, that kind of aligns with what Bossy's probably thinking and what a lot, a lot of people are probably thinking is that coming home, uh, a spot that has a point guard opening and uh, could be – could be a match after the uh, the second try. Man, a junior league guard who Derek is kind of known for his um, competitiveness, for his ability to score at, at all three levels. Like he's got this big body, can can kind of bully himself to the rim, uh, can get to the free throw line, shoots at a high rate. Um, he doesn't get to in the free throw line probably enough, but a really good three point shooter. This is this is as good of a compliment as I guess. There's times you watch him and it's like there's some Jalen Brunson there. Like there's there's just some of that kind of uh, lead guard mentality, and Marcus Damask was unbelievable. It's hard to find another one of those. So to, to get like there's a lot of value here. Sure, there's some risk because he had some inconsistency issues, but at 19 years old, year 19 of what he'll be playing, uh, potential multi-year guy. Like they know him extremely well. I mean, they recruited him. They recruited Trey White. So they. The high school recruiting pays off sometimes in this transfer portal just because you have some background and knowledge of these guys. I think he'd just be a, a, a big-time addition and one of your best players next year. 100% agree. And I think that from the maturity standpoint, you know, new new scenery, but also going back to a place where there's a lot of family around him could, could help him to, to be a little bit more accountable as far as that goes, a little bit more dialed in and, and, and just just grow as a as a as a young a young man and, and someone that's in college basketball and um, similar though to Trey white, even though he's still a, a young prospect, like he's a guy that two years of eligibility left. He, he needs to start getting on that path because he does have big time pro upside potential. I, I'm not saying he's going to be a lottery pick or anything, but he could be a, an NBA draft pick if he figures it out. So I, I think that he could be, I know I was listening to uh, your podcast with Trotter uh, and I fully agree. Like, he could be one of the best guards in the Big Ten if Illinois can really tap into to who he can be. So uh, I think that, again, shooting, pick and roll, uh, being able to set the table for other guys and just uh, also maybe he does booty ball some people. You know, Jalen Brunson at Villanova was uh, an ability. If he saw a smaller guard that he wanted to take into the post, he did that a lot. I think Kylan can do that. And uh, I think it'd be a really, really good addition. I, I'm, I know that there are some out there and look, it's, when you when you have transfers and guys that maybe haven't, there's a reason they're not transferring to the NBA draft. Like, <laughs> there's going to be some reasons that has things haven't gone perfectly. Um, so you're going to hear different things. Um, some would say that Kylan, you know, whatever reservations about about him and and taking some of the the intel or just what Arizona fans have said about him. But I would be thrilled with him if I was Illinois personally. I think that they obviously really really want him. Yeah, like we twenty four seven sports has not given him the rating quite yet. I, I know Adam Finkelstein has a really good scouting report on twenty four seven sports. Search Kylan Boswell, and you can see his transfer scouting report. And I think it's a lot of things we've talked about. He's going to be a top thirty transfer. Like so, that that's what we're talking about here. And that, and that kind of talent, Illinois needs talent, and to get somebody that's experienced at that high level and was part of a winning program and part of that winning. Uh, I think would be a, a huge addition. Uh, but Illinois, Illinois, the dead period is going to end, I believe, after today. Right, Derek? Um, so visits are on the horizon here, right? After uh, Thursday. Yep. After Thursday. So this weekend they start visits. And uh, do you want to go ahead and share who, who the first visitor will be here? 
Sure. Yeah. Kerry Booth, Notre Dame transfer, son of Calvin Booth, who former uh, NBA player, went, uh, played at Kentucky. And uh, another guy that's that's pretty young. I think he's still only 18 years old. Didn't have a, a great season at Notre Dame. You, you see him being able to step out and make threes, and he is a, a definite stretch four. His, his percentages from deep last year weren't fantastic. I think he's around 30%, maybe even 29. Uh, but someone that it's another upside play. It's another guy that they just love who he can become. It's kind of, and I know that he was thought of this as a prospect. He was, uh, I believe, a top 50 prospect uh, in the 23 class, but uh, a pro, just a matter of not if, but when, if, once his body develops and uh, as you really tap into all the skills that he has. But he is able to play on the perimeter. Uh, <laughs> Go off the bounce right there. That's pretty nice. Like, I, I know we can look at his percentages, Derek. He shot a little under 40% from the field, a little under 30% from three. Just look at these flashes. Like, as we're running the film here on our YouTube channel, like, that's what a pro looks like. And as you said, he's still 18. So keep keep going. But you just watch yeah. it. You're right. That guy looks like he could be in the NBA someday. Right. right. I think it'd be a really good compliment to Marez Johnson, who is – his strengths are what – Kerry doesn't necessarily do well is the the nastiness, the physicality, the rebounding, the, the ability to play through contact, the ability to to hang in the paint. Uh, Kerry wants to play more on the perimeter, wants to be more of a stretch four, uh, has skill to him, uh, like the shooting, the ability to do some things off the dribble that Merez – now, Merez has gotten better as a shooter, but it's still not going to be something that he is is great at or really you know stretching the floor. So – uh, I think it's interesting. It's probably a, a conversation in itself, but the idea of if you land Booth and, and I think him coming in as the first visit shows how much they want him. It sounds like Alabama is also a, a pretty big player as well. But if you get him, Kylan, uh, obviously Trey White, even you could throw in AJ Store. Although if AJ comes to Illinois, he's probably thinking, uh, you know, one year and then and then go to the league. But is this a multi-year? potential build like Marez Johnson is is also someone that you know as a sophomore you bring in Jeremiah Fears a year from now this could be a really if they go if this is what really comes together for Illinois it's possible that and I know you can never really fully plan for years ahead beyond just one in the portal era because guys can transfer again but that following year could be really really promising if some of these guys come back and then obviously Marez is a sophomore um, Amani, if he's still here as a junior, and then Jeremiah Fears coming as a freshman. You're hitting on a, a thing that I've been noticing, Tarek. Um, the guys they are targeting, most of them, uh, obviously, Store's got multiple years of eligibility, but he'd probably be a one year guy. Dante Maddox, we'll talk about here in a second, one year guy. Uh, last year was all about just get the most you can out of that roster, which included Terrence Shannon, Coleman Hawkins. You didn't know for sure, but they had a decent idea that they could have a chance to get those guys back. Um, I, I think they are gearing up here for the next window, which is like a two-year window. That's probably all you can really plan for in the portal era. And even then, you could lose guys, right? So I, I think that they're setting themselves up with Trey White potentially two years. Now, if he's great and goes to the NBA after one year, phenomenal. If A.J. Storr was that way, but Kylan Boswell I think is a two-year player. Uh, wherever he goes. And then Kerry Booth certainly, I think, would be a, a two-year kind of player. This year, you could compete. You can compete in the top of the Big Ten. I think you'd make an NCAA tournament with it, this kind of group. Uh, but then that next year, you could potentially be special. No doubt. Yeah, I do. Shout out to John. I, I said Kentucky for Calvin Booth. He went to Penn State. Yeah. Uh, and that that helped the connection. He was going to go to the Penn State with Shrews and then stick with it and went to Notre Dame. Which is, we know, um, Illinois has a connection to Calvin Booth, who's the Denver Nuggets GM, a former line yes. of staffers on his staff uh, and with the Denver Nuggets. So they have – they know the boost well. Yep. And we've seen, we've seen Calvin at a couple games already. Yeah. yeah. It could definitely help for sure. And, and just as you're talking to other people, the the idea that eyes of an NBA GM are on pretty much all of your games, that's, that's not a bad thing uh, to think about. But, yeah – Two years from now, uh, the thought of what that could be, again, you, you never fully know because of just how wild and free the player movement is right now, that guys could come in and then go to another school and not be limited even on multi-transfers and whatnot. But uh, I do think, Brad, I don't want to say that his mindset has totally shifted. I think he's still someone that 
is pretty much all in every year, like wants to go far every single year. But I think that there, there's we'd be ignoring the signs if we weren't saying based on kind of who they're going after and, and whatnot, that maybe it is an ability to put something together that could hold for, for two years. We saw that uh, in previous iterations, obviously, of Illinois. It was a little bit of a different era because we weren't fully all out pedal to the metal NIL and pedal to the metal uh, transfer portal. But uh, being able to like Terrence Shannon coming back for another year, you mentioned Coleman Hawkins or, or the way that uh, you were able to get obviously um, IO and, and Kofi together for multiple years that could really pay dividends. If Kylan comes in and ultimately needs two years before he goes pro or if, uh, Trey white needs two years to really prove and, and show where he can go. Cal uh, carry booth as well. So uh, I think it's interesting because, you know, Xavier Amos from Northern Illinois, uh, there, there's some other older, like the uh, uh, Rick House from Evansville as well, who we we like. I think the staff really likes. Really interesting. Older got w- one year of eligibility. Um, the idea that they they really like Booth speaks to his upside, but also maybe speaks to the potential of having multiple years of him versus one year of a rental. And can I just point out, if you zoom out, the talent we're, of the guys we're talking about, here, Derek. Uh, Kylan Boswell was a five-star prospect. Uh, Kerry Booth was a top 70 prospect. Trey White was a top 40 prospect. Like these are NBA type guys. Like that, that pe- people in the NBA are watching these guys. I mean, we know AJ Store is is a potential NBA player. Like you get a lot of these guys we're talking about. You're one of the most talented rosters in the Big Ten and one of the more talented rosters in the country. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's something that they have, they've really raised the bar. We've talked about it through the years uh, here recently. Uh, the run of success of raising the bar. Like, look at the guys who were coming off the bench for Illinois this past year. You know, Amani was a top 50 prospect. Uh, you, you know, Dre at one time was a, was a, I think he at one time was a five star. I know he slipped as his uh, high school career went on, but you've got some, some talented guys. You know, Sincere Harris was, Four star boarding on top 100 decided like I, I I'm in a red shirt because Illinois is just stacked. So Quincy was a top prospect, right? Quincy was, yeah, for sure. So uh, I think that that's obviously a big deal. Uh, you do need pieces that fit too, uh, and I think that I'm not anything that they've done so far. Any kind of thinking that they have as far as how things would put together, like let's just say it flat out. Like if they get Boswell, Dante Maddox, AJ Store. Uh, have an option to play, you know, Trey Wyatt at the four, maybe Kerry Booth. And uh, we know Merez at the five, uh, Amani probably a, a, a five, four type of guy. Uh, maybe they go out and, and want another five. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that was the case. I, I think that that makes sense. But uh, the Big Ten could be pretty wide open next year. No Zach Eady. That's right. And um, whether, it, you know, say what you want about how Purdue's going to be or what Wisconsin brings back. Just the idea that Illinois will be talented enough to once again be in the top five of the league is, if they get there, I know there's still, they've only added two pieces. They got to go get those those others, but that would be um, kind of what you're hoping for in terms of consistency of a program. Yeah, I have no idea who's going to be at the top of the Big Ten. Check back in a month, uh, but uh, I think Michigan's going to be better, and I think uh, Ohio State's going to be better. So th- those programs are are, are going to get better here. So the depth, I still think is going to be really, really good. Uh, let's mention uh, another guy that you've talked to and said he's going to visit uh, the guard market, Derek. Illinois is hoping to get uh, this guy on a visit before after he visits another school. Dante Maddox from Toledo, uh, another Toledo pursuit that turned your stomach, I understand. Uh, but he goes to Louisville to start off uh, his visit to her right after the dead period. He'll be there on Friday. Uh, I know that Jody Demling of, of Cardinal Authority uh, reported that first. And uh, then after that, Illinois started next week. Xavier, he told me, uh, is a visit that he has locked in after Illinois. And then he's also, it's been released that he has a top five, which also includes those three schools uh, in addition to Michigan and Creighton. So looking into visits for those two places as well. I'm sure that Louisville will try to close him this weekend and make sure he goes nowhere else. Illinois is very much going to, if he gets to Champaign, try to make sure that's his last visit. And, and close that deal and, and make sure that's done. But a really, really good shooter. I talked about Jake Davis being great off movement. So is Maddox. I mean, spot up and off movement as well. Deep range. I mean, that's an NBA plus three right there. 40% uh, on on threes. And 
Uh, has some, I know he's only 6'2", but uh, I know that Michael Tulip has uh, pointed out the wingspan, uh, you know, maybe 6'8", six, 6'9", six, wingspan, strong, can, can play in the lane. Uh, has been an off-ball guy most of his career, but after Ray J. Dennis left Toledo, he then became essentially their point guard last year. Uh, so has an ability to make some plays off the bounce, uh, improved his assist rate last season. I don't think Illinois is pursuing him as their point guard, uh, as we talked about Kylan Boswell. But uh, I do think as a as a combo who can start, uh, I don't know. I mean, the way that you got to probably sell him based on how much uh, others want him. And I think just the way Illinois has really gotten to the point of making him a big priority, probably got to think of him as, as your two guard, uh, as a starter and whatnot. But I think he's a really, really good player, would be a great addition. And Illinois, uh, being for an, an in-state guy and someone that, you know, I think Tim has been working really hard and, and just the, the staff wants him really bad. They've been yeah. uh, turning up the heat on that, and, and they definitely hope to get that done. Yeah, my concern would be another school can sell you as being the guy, right? Sure. And, and, and is he going to be that at Illinois? Like, they could just sell it right now, but, like, I think he and Kyle and Boswell can play together. I know they're shorter guards at 6'2", but as you said, both have size to them. They're they're both bigger bodies with good frames, uh, and, and I do think Maddox has some length to him. Plus, if you're surrounding them with a Trey White, an A.J. Store, a Ty Rogers, a Merez Johnson, Kerry Booth, like these kind of players, Amani Hansberry, like they have positional size everywhere else. So uh, I love him. I think he'd be a great one-year player for Illinois. Just gives you a veteran that can shoot it, score it, and if you're thinking about the roster you're building, I think it'd be more, I only say this because all five starters scored in double digits, it'd be more like UConn where you're not so reliant on one or two players to do all your scoring. I think it'd just be a more balanced uh, attack for Illinois. And I just think he's, he just plays like a winner, man, when, when you watch him and his ability to score and, and make others better. So uh, I can see why so many schools really, really like him, even if he doesn't have probably an NBA ceiling. Yep, fully agree with that. Son of a high school coach up there in the Chicago area, Play and uh, I think if you're trying to open up the the lane for, or you're trying to just open up things for AJ Store, similar to what you were able to do for Terrence Shannon this past year, having a a guy in, in a point guard like Kylan Boswell that can shoot it off the off the ball, have Maddox off the ball to shoot it. Uh, assuming you can get a higher percentage out of Kerry Booth if you were to land him, uh, we know that Luke Goody obviously can shoot it. Uh, those are things that can really maximize a downhill player, uh, which Terrence was, which AJ can definitely be. Um, he's a shot creator, and it does. Like I, I fully agree. I, I think that it, it is funny how whoever wins the national title is then like the blueprint. Like, how do you become this team? And I, that happens. Like, that's legit right. conversations with coaches out there. Of how do we become like them? But well, Brad loses to Houston. He's like, I got to get that. I got, I got to yeah. do that. They lose to you. I got to get that. Yeah. Yep. Like Kansas was. Can't, when Kansas won it with Abaji and, and Christian Brown, that then became the how do we get big wings? How do we get big wings that can make plays um, and, and create and then put pieces around those, maybe even have them as our init, uh, initiators and whatnot. So uh, it's funny how that works. But uh, the UConn thing is uh, to have depth, a bunch of talent, and just guys that can play roles, but also just not to have maybe – one guy that needs to, to get it all. And not that they only had that last year, even though Terrence had a phenomenal year, they did have other capable players, but the offensive balance, the just loading up on talent, like UConn just, just loaded up that roster. They got talent everywhere. Um, the, the rim eater off the bench. Uh, I always go back <laughs> Samson uh, Johnson or whatever his name is. They just got a bunch of talent, athleticism, and obviously Illinois wants the same. I think I said Maddox out of Rockford. That's Marcus Hill, and that's AJ Store. He's out of Chicago Heights, went to Bloom Township. So I uh, just wanted to correct that uh, before we wrap up here. We got some questions, Derek, but um, anything else to monitor moving forward? Obviously, I think we focused on their top targets. Anything else to monitor as, as we move ahead these these next couple of weeks? It's obviously, I think, a big week, week and a half ahead to, to close on some of these top guys. Yeah, I, I think some of the priorities have obviously – become clear now with with Maddox I think Boswell will be a big one obviously AJ Store uh the four spot I think if if they don't get Kerry Booth it would be then we go be pivoting back it, do they get Xavier Amos on campus uh is uh Ben Humrick House from Evansville someone they can get in uh as well I, I would still on my radar is still a five like do they find a five that they really like 
uh, to come in and, and be a rim protector or just how that ultimately works out. Uh, because I don't think that they're necessarily comfortable with saying, Merez, you're going to start for us and play 25 minutes a game. Like right. That's just probably unrealistic. You know what I can envision for Merez Johnson as a freshman big man? Foul trouble. Yeah, right. I, I have no doubt he's going to be able to hold up. He's big bodied, plays hard. Like some of the things we like about Amani, supercharged with a bigger body, maybe more athletic. Like I, I think he's going to translate really well. It's just I think he's going to foul at yep. a big time level early on. Yeah, no, I fully agree with that. And, and hand in hand, just to speak honestly, like I, I think that as interesting as who they're going to bring in and, and evaluate, I think just the reaction of the current roster uh, is going to be super intriguing. Like, I, I admit, like seeing Trey White, he's not the same player, but Ty Rogers might say, hey, this is a guy that can do some of the things that I do as far as size, athleticism, rebounding, but he has an offensive game that I that I don't necessarily have. I'm not saying you can't find a way to make that work and that Ty becomes in value or not having value or uh, things like that, but I think that's interesting with him. The forwards. I mean, you're adding all these forwards. Uh, where's Amani fit in? Amani. Like, I, I think Amani can play with Kerry Booth. I think he can play with Trey White. But the minutes, all of a sudden, like I think Amani's deserving of a big role at the high major level as a sophomore. I think he's a really interesting prospect. Um, but if they're if they're trying to upgrade, like what does he think of, of that? Like, is he is he fine splitting time with Merez Johnson at the five, playing fifteen to twenty five minutes? Like, I think those are all things we can fairly speculate. I'm not saying these guys are leaving or anything like that, but you know, fans are thinking about it. Like these guys are thinking about it uh, right now. So you've talked with Luke Goody. I think he's pretty locked in. I think his role is, is going to be there on a team, but all these guys as we talked about before, like they got to be as interested as us of what Illinois is adding. Like, Jace Butler certainly was interested in what Illinois was adding. I think they all are for the most part. Uh, I know that, uh, yeah, I think DGL is coming back for sure. Uh, that seems to be pretty solidified, uh, even if they go out and get some guards. Um, may, things can change, though. Uh, I, I wouldn't write anything in, in permanent marker <laughs> necessarily. So uh, Sincere is another guy, admittedly, that it, based on who they add, if they bring in uh, Maddox, they bring in Kylan Boswell, what that ultimately looks like uh, for him. Because uh, he's going to be in competition with DGL, too, uh, off the bench and, and, and all that. So uh, I, I don't blame anybody, uh, whether you're if you're sitting there on the roster and if you want to come back or how you, if you're out the door, or what, whatever. Uh, I think that evaluating your situation is important, um, even though people don't like uh, the idea of, of players. I think it's it's always an immediate critique when someone's played at multiple schools over a course of two, three years. And they're like, oh, that's a, that's a bad. Well, sometimes sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works out. And that's the best thing for that player. Like if and then like if Amani wanted to go somewhere, if they get Carrie Booth, and especially if they get a five, like I wouldn't blame him one bit if he wanted to then go uh go somewhere else. So I think that it's important though for for Brad and the staff to really feel like to understand and and, and who they want to make comfortable. Like do they want to to maybe dial back at one position to make sure that this guy's not going to get upset and leave. But for the most part, because let's be honest, a lot of the guys that could return are are role players. That the role players that um, you could upgrade from at certain spots for sure, and uh, it's not going to hold them back as Brad has shown of of going and getting who they want. Yeah, this isn't like you had Io Desumu's freshman year and you're trying to over out recruit him, right? Like yeah. or Kofi, you're, like right. those guys you're not going to over recruit. But none of these other guys have have quite proven that. 318 says, I miss the days when you recruited, then you watch you guys grow for four years. This is more like free agency, no connection with players, teams anymore. Seems all about self. I wouldn't put that towards the players, though, either. Like it's the coaches, too, because this has been really good for Illinois. This has been really good for Brad Underwood so far. Um, you know, going to the portal has really, really helped him. I and mean, we could talk about 22 23 like it wasn't a success. But think if you didn't have Terrence Shannon or Matthew Meyer on that team. Like that was a successful portal. It was more less successful because you handed the keys to freshman guards who didn't stand stay around. Uh, and you had guys on the wing who just didn't shoot it all that well. Uh, RJ got hurt. Luke got hurt. So that, that plan didn't ultimately get the most success that they wanted. But the portal has been extremely successful for Illinois and Brad Underwood. And they've been selfish in over recruiting players, but I don't blame them because players can be selfish too. So 
I get it, Derek. It's not the same. It's it's different. You're not growing up with most of these guys for three, four years, and the team grows together. Tom Izzo certainly loves that approach. It's not working for him. Like it, it is not working for him. This approach is working for Brad Underwood. And it's the reason Illinois basketball is successful. It's certainly different. And I understand why some people aren't as idealistic about it. It's more like the pros, right? I, I, I get the the way that you want to have the attachment. And it's it's hard. Like there are people as fans that go out and buy jerseys of of guys and then they're gone the next year. And, and I I fully understand that. And it was fun. I even as even covering it to see a certain player go through the process of like Coleman Hawkins to be able to cover Coleman Hawkins, watch his maturation, watch the way that he came into a role. It was, it was cool. can I give you a random one? Maverick Morgan. Yeah. Like that guy would have transferred by a sophomore year nowadays. Sure. But like he obviously they weren't good teams then. So we're talking about the other thing. But like seeing him develop into like an impact Big Ten score was that's cool to see. You're not going to see that probably as much. Coleman is the recent exception there. For sure. Yeah. It's I so I understand all that, but I, I do also, you know, the the portal allowed Illinois in their down year to go to the tournament. Like in their in their down year where they're a nine seed uh with Terrence and Matthew Meyer to go to the tournament. And I think if you take the a look around, even in the same era, you take a look around the Big Ten, see what Michigan's down year looked like, see what Indiana's down years have looked like, Ohio State's like you should feel pretty excited that being able to go into the portal and, and get what you need can make that look like that. Or just to be able to reload after, you know, in, in a normal roster build and not having the portal when you lose all the Illinois is about to lose it could when are you going to get back to that level when are you going to get back to having it being a second weekend team and and how that there would be a, a real question of that so and I think a lot of people enjoyed watching Terrence Shannon Jr. he probably he never comes to Illinois without the portal mm -hmm. uh, and you throw NIL in there as well yes uh, as teams are doing what's best for them so are some players going to do that and it's it's I think from and, and admittedly for me, because I remember what we, you know, we've done this long enough to you go back seven, eight years ago, how much high school recruiting. That's how we started this site, right? It was yeah. like you go into Peach Jam and covering Jeremiah Tillman and Javon Pickett and all. There's not, not really a reason to go to Peach Jam anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. Stay, yeah. stay at home and work your phone. <laughs> right. It's crazy how that's changed. And I, I do, I, I liked and appreciated what that, that, certain way of roster building was like and it was fun to build relationships and and see that it was going to uh, be over a longer term period uh but now that the busiest time as far as roster building is literally right after the season and what we're doing right now at the portal which is and, it, and it's crazy but it provides it it's good to illinois it, it provides a lot of opportunity and then for illinois to get involved on the money side let's be honest with it like or and josh involved, Whitman knew it josh Whitman however you want to call it yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And Josh Whitman knew this was like, all right, we're behind right now. This is a way to catch up. Like, I'm yeah. going to embrace this. We're going to play within the rules. But, like, whatever the rules are right now, yeah. right now, it feels like there are no rules. But, like, they were like, hey, we're going to embrace this. While other schools, Michigan, were, were tough to catch up right away. Right. And no doubt they were on the, the front end of being able to be in a great position. And then I know the, the rules changed in terms of involvement with the – with the school and 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 then the uh, invention of the collective and whatnot, but they they've been able to they on the front end were very well positioned, then pivoted with the, the collective and everything, and uh, they've as far as being able to raise the the interest and the money, and of course you got to have it helps to have a winning to have Brad have done the winning with Io and Kofi and have the belief and and the dude that's running the program and and where it's going to then get the money uh, to go out and spend it, but. Uh, it, it's been something that's been outstanding for the Illini to keep someone like Terrence Shannon for two years or to get Kofi to, to pull out of the draft and come back to make a, a, a pretty penny and whatnot. So uh, that's all been uh, super positive for Illinois. And I will drop just a – it sounded like Illinois' – the collective's NIL fund has gone up here recently. I've heard that from a couple of people, and I, I think an Elite Eight run probably uh, helped that. Elite Eight run, seeing what – a guy like Terrence Shannon could do for your program. A guy like Marcus Damas could do for your program. Yeah, that helps. Um, all right, a few more. We did, we went way over the 45 minutes I allotted for this, Derek. But uh, Daff asks, I'm sure Illini aren't pursuing, but do you guys think Robbie 
Avila, it should be Avila, but I heard it's Avila. Would be Adam Fletcher's greatest career triumph, or would he take five years off Fletcher's life? Look, we could share this, right? Like Illinois staff, like there's somebody on the set that loves Robbie Avila. And how could you not? So skilled. I don't think he could defend anybody. I would imagine he's going to follow his coach shirts to uh, SLU, but I would imagine there's a lot of high majors interested in him. And boy, go make that NIL money, Robbie. Uh, go go make that NIL money. But yeah, I think they're focused on more of the, the switchable, athletic, springy, skilled guys. Offensively, it'd be a lot of fun. Like his skill, well, wise. Come on, I mean, and, and the story. I, I want him to to bring in Robbie here. Yeah, right. No, I, I get that. And a mean streets guy from the state of Illinois. Uh, I think th- just the defensive end and the the fact that can he guard anybody and and how does he? Uh, I think also maybe can he do the same things against high major athletes and and uh, all of that is is a question. Didn't play very well in the Michigan State game, but admittedly, obviously had a fent. Fantastic season, great story, and a, a pretty darn good player. But uh, I think that at times he was a guy that you kind of raise your eyebrows at, seeing what he was doing earlier in the season and knowing that he was with Mean Streets, play with Ty Rogers, has a relationship there. We know with uh, Tim Anderson, the, the Mean Streets connection, I think it was a, a wonder, a thought, a, kind of like a hmm, if this guy go, goes in the portal. But uh, I don't think at this time Illinois is, is going to be really involved, and I – it does sound like there's a lot of buzz out there for him to go to SLU. And uh, yeah. in the past, knowing some of the Illinois competing with SLU in uh, recruitments, that <laughs> there is money uh, in the yeah. SLU area for sure. Uh, I forgot the report of the TV reporter who's always uh, on all this oh, stuff. Frank Cusumano, right? Yeah, yeah. I just remember, I'm, all the SLU stuff is coming back uh, yeah. in my head now. But I think that's a great hire because if you can get that roster, that Indiana State roster at SLU with the coach, who I think is a really good coach, That'd be a, a pretty big thing for SLU. Uh, let's see, just a few more. Colton, Jeremy, and Derek, if you had to choose between Store, Dante, Maddox, or Boswell and rank them, what would you think? Yes. Give me all of them. <laughs> Give me all of them. All right, John Gross once called me up because we did a radio show and somebody asked me the question, would you rather have Jalen Brunson or Jawan Evans? I said, both of them. I want, I want either of them. It doesn't matter. Illinois needs talent. And I think I sided with Jalen because I liked his game a little bit more. Uh, and I got a call from John Gross said, Hey, Juwan Evans' mother was listening to you. Can you not say that? So I, I'm not going to say one because uh, Illinois wants all of these guys, Derek. And I, I think they they're, want all, all. they're all helpful. They all play together. Yeah. They want all of them. If I have to pick, I'd say I want AJ Store the most. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you noticed, like, because there's on the chat, I try not to pay attention to like what the vocal minority or whatever the loud stuff is on Twitter, but there's like a lot of people like doubting whether you should take AJ Store. And, Listen, I get it. Like, there's there's times he hurt Wisconsin, but he really helped Wisconsin in the long run. I don't buy into the fact that, oh, they're better without A.J. Store. We saw the Big Ten tournament. We saw what he was able to do in that non-conference. Like, this guy has unbelievable talent. He's still young. He's just a sophomore. I think he can get better. I think he can get better in a, a more freedom offense. Uh, he's – He's a top five transfer on 24-7 sports for for a reason. There's a reason it's Illinois, Kentucky, Kansas. Ole Miss. Like they are the big schools want AJ store for a reason. 100 percent I mean, he's a second team all league guy. And if you would have done the voting after January, he'd be a first teamer. Yep. Just as Wisconsin had a slide in, in February, uh, he didn't play all that well uh during that stretch. Was phenomenal at the Big Ten tournament. You saw really the the best version of what he can be, the upside. I mean, he's a great athlete, can attack the rim, can get his own shot, uh, can, can be a bucket maker mid-range from three. Yeah, defensively needs to get a lot more buy-in there and needs to be better and more dialed in. And I, I think shot selection at times, he didn't shoot a bad percentage. Uh, I think that there are obviously critiques of the fact that he didn't – he had less than one assist yeah. per game last year. That's going to improve. Like, he needs to improve, yeah. Yeah, as a guy that – had the ball in his hands as much as he did. Now, admittedly, like you look at Chucky Hepburn was really their their facilitator and initiator. But I, I think that some people just forget that he's a sophomore, that he's a sophomore and going to become a junior. And I've we've talked about it on a pod before. Like, look at his, his numbers compared to I would assume was as a sophomore. And, and some of these other guys, look at look at who he was as a sophomore compared to what Terrence Shannon Jr. was at Texas Tech. Te- Terrence, Terrence, Terrence Shannon was a spot up three and D wing at, at Texas tech. He wasn't uh, and yeah, he could play in transition, but he was not a 
primary on ball scorer and and just a star. He was he was a complimentary piece to Texas Tech. If Illinois really and they do believe in their developmental abilities, like they should be drooling at AJ Store. And I, I know that they're they're big time on that one. I'm not saying you got to like again everybody that's transferring. And I, I think also I want to touch on. Again, the schools with AJ went to a lot of high schools. I do know that uh, St. John's, Wisconsin. This will be his third school, so I understand some of the hesitancy there. But even if you only said you're only guaranteed one year of AJ Store, perfect. I'm cool. Let's do it. Let's yeah, like right there, there's risk in there. Like there, there's some risk that maybe he's got some Caleb love to him. Like that. Sorry, that's not deterring me. Like Caleb loves a phenomenal college basketball player who can get buckets. And yeah, some games maybe. He can shoot you out of some things, but like Brad Underwood has shown that he can develop. He can make players better. And that guy's probably going to get me to an NCAA tournament or help me as part of this roster. He certainly helped Wisconsin get a five seed last year. So I get it. It's not, he's not a perfect player, but he's a darn good one. And he'd be in the mix. Like if AJ store went to Illinois, he'd be in the mix for big 10 preseason player of the year. Yes. Right. It'd be Braden Smith and him. Unless Marcus Damask comes back, right? Like, those are the guys we'd be talking about. Hundred percent, yeah. And would be fully. You don't want that guy like that. Yeah, doesn't... right. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Um, again, yeah, he'll have to he'll have to guard. He'll have to maybe get a little bit more of discretion with his shot selection, but uh, and, and work on finding other guys, making other guys better. But I'd rather <laughs> add to what he already has than than try to take someone a lot more unproven who hasn't put up 16 a game in the big 10 before. I, that's crazy. And you said it right there. I mean, the teams that want him tell the story. Uh, it is a high price tag, but I think he's worth it. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Ryan for the uh, $20 super chat. We really, really appreciate you guys. Any final thoughts, Derek? We did go over an hour, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I would have taken the over going in, so it's not a problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we we've covered it all. This is, um, a wild time. I should mention, how does the Kentucky coaching change affect their involvement with Store? Would, would Kyle Perry be involved yeah. at Arkansas with Store? Where's Chin Coleman going to land? That's a big question. The guy that got Store committed to Illinois. I think that's worth bringing up. Um, I, I don't have any doubt that Kentucky's going to hit a home run uh, at, with their hire. I, the, I think they'll they'll at least get Scott Drew, in my opinion, just based on kind of what's out there. But um, maybe Antigua, I, I, I've been hearing some stuff. Antigua will have interest in staying at Kentucky versus maybe following Cal to Arkansas. So that make a lot um, of sense for whoever gets that job. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I think he's one of the best assistants in college basketball. So I, I wouldn't be, you know, put it past him that a guy that's pretty familiar, although he wasn't the lead recruiter, uh, on store with, when Coleman was there and got him committed to Illinois, if he, whoever's next to Kentucky is involved with trying to get AJ and whatnot. So uh, that's worth, that's worth throwing out there. I think. Yeah. Uh, Scott drew Billy Donovan. I, they got to wait a little bit. I don't think the bulls are going to be in the play in that long, but they might have to wait a week before uh, they're able to, to do that. But I, I, I think Scott drew is a home run. Like it, it just makes too much sense to me. Uh, do you buy into anything that Brad Underwood is potentially in, in the mix for that job? I wouldn't be surprised if he's on a list. Yeah. Um, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I just hearing just, that, right? Yeah. I just don't see him being in the top five candidates. Now, some of the tops, like you can probably cross off Dan Hurley, uh, and obviously Nate Oates has crossed himself off, but I, I wouldn't see why they'd want no disrespect to Brad, why they want Brad over Scott Drew's won a national title, or uh even uh, I'm in full agreement with Trotter, like Sean Miller uh, has always been someone that's made a lot of sense. Uh, in case that job opens up. So uh, it says a lot that, that Brad is uh, considered or thought to be maybe on, on that list. If they, if they don't get some of their, their top wants, uh, although I know Illinois uh, won't want that because they want to keep their dude. Um, but yeah, he, he should be attractive because he's, he's done a heck of a job with consistency. He finally got to the elite eight here and um, knows how to operate in the portal era and, and NIL and everything. So um Illinois should feel good about their dude, and they do. 
All right, for Derek Piper, I'm Jeremy Werner. Thanks to the 400, 500 plus that joined us on the live YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to us, hit the notifications bell. We appreciate you guys doing that. If you're listening on the podcast, give us a follow, rating, review wherever you get your podcast. Derek has been all over this stuff. If you're not a VIP member, now is a great time to sign up for the latest on the portal. He's been all over it. Uh, we got our transfer portal big board up, and we're continually upgrading, updating that. I got to take Trey White off the board this morning and add him to the addition list here. Uh, but we'll be all over it. And Joey Wagner and I covering spring ball. We got Johnny Newton's pro day coming up. The NFL draft will both hit the road for that. So plenty coming up at Alana Enquirer. Everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Alana Enquirer podcast.